After some further discussion, my mother promised once more to assist me, provided I would wait and be patient, and I left her to broach the matter to my father, when and how she deemed it most advisable, never doubting her ability to obtain his consent. Meantime, I searched with great interest the advertising columns of the newspapers, and wrote letters to every wanted a governess that appeared at all eligible. But all my letters, as well as the replies, when I got any, were dutifully shown to my mother, and she, to my chagrin, made me reject the situations one after another. These were low people, these were too exacting in their demands, and these too niggardly in their remuneration. "'Your talents are not such as every poor clergyman's daughter possesses, Agnes,' she would say, "'and you must not throw them away. "'Remember, you promise to be patient. "'There is no need of hurry. "'You have plenty of time before you, and may have many chances yet.' "'At length she advised me to put an advertisement myself in the paper, "'stating my qualifications, etc. "'Music, singing, drawing, French, Latin, and German,' said she, "'are no mean assemblage.' Many will be glad to have so much in one instructor, and this time you shall try your fortune in a somewhat higher family, in that of a genuine thoroughbred gentleman, for such are far more likely to treat you with proper respect and consideration than those purse-proud tradespeople and arrogant upstarts. I have known several among the higher ranks who treated their governesses quite as one of the family, though some, I allow, are as insolent and exacting as any one else can be for there are bad and good in all classes. The advertisement was quickly written and dispatched. Of the two parties who answered it, but one would consent to give me fifty pounds, the sum my mother bade me name as the salary I should require. And here I hesitated about engaging myself, as I feared the children would be too old, and their parents would require someone more showy, or more experienced, if not more accomplished than I but my mother dissuaded me from declining it on that account. I should do vastly well, she said, if I would only throw aside my diffidence and acquire a little more confidence in myself. I was just to give a plain, true statement of my acquirements and qualifications and name what stipulations I chose to make, and then await the result. The only stipulation I ventured to propose was that I might be allowed two months' holidays during the year to visit my friends, at midsummer and Christmas. The unknown lady, in her reply, made no objection to this, and stated that, as to my acquirements, she had no doubt I should be able to give satisfaction. But in the engagement of governesses, she considered those things as but subordinate points, as, being situated in the neighborhood of O, she could get masters to supply any deficiencies in that respect. But, in her opinion, next to unimpeachable morality, a mild and cheerful temper and obliging disposition were the most essential requisites. My mother did not relish this at all, and now made many objections to my accepting the situation, in which my sister warmly supported her. But, unwilling to be balked again, I overruled them all, and having first obtained the consent of my father, who had a short time previously been apprised of these transactions, I wrote a most obliging epistle to my unknown correspondent, and finally the bargain was concluded. It was decreed that on the last day of January I was to enter upon my new office as governess in the family of Mr. Murray, of Horton Lodge, near O, about seventy miles from our village, a formidable distance to me, as I had never been above twenty miles from home in all the course of my twenty years' sojourn on earth, and as, moreover, Every individual in that family, and in the neighborhood, was utterly unknown to myself and all my acquaintances. But this rendered it only the more piquant to me. I had now, in some measure, got rid of the mauvaise aunt that had formerly oppressed me so much. There was a pleasing excitement in the idea of entering these unknown regions, and making my way alone among its strange inhabitants. I now flattered myself I was going to see something in the world. Mr. Murray's residence was near a large town, and not in a manufacturing district, where the people had nothing to do but make money. His rank, from what I could gather, appeared to be higher than that of Mr. Bloomfield, and doubtless he was one of those genuine thoroughbred gentry my mother spoke of, who would treat his governess with due consideration as a respectable, well-educated lady. 
the instructor and guide of his children, and not a mere upper servant. Then, my pupils being older, would be more rational, more teachable, and less troublesome than the last. They would be less confined to the schoolroom, and not require that constant labor and incessant watching. And finally, bright visions mingled with my hopes, with which the care of children and the mere duties of a governess had little or nothing to do. Thus the reader will see that I had no claim to be regarded as a martyr to filial piety, going forth to sacrifice peace and liberty for the sole purpose of laying up stores for the comfort and support of my parents, though certainly the comfort of my father, and the future support of my mother, had a large share in my calculations, and fifty pounds appeared to me no ordinary sum. I must have decent clothes becoming my station, I must, it seemed, put out my washing, and also pay for my four annual journeys between Horton Lodge and home. But with strict attention to economy, surely twenty pounds, or little more, would cover those expenses, and then there would be thirty for the bank, or little less. What a valuable addition to our stock! Oh, I must struggle to keep the situation, whatever it might be, both for my own honor among my friends, and for the solid services I might render them by my continuance there. End of chapter 6 Recording by Melissa